Hey guys, it's a beautiful day today. It's feeling very spring-like. And today we're going to be planting blackberries and raspberries. And we're gonna be planting them up here in the new cottage garden. I've cleared a space in the back here by the fence and I've built a trellis. Now, if you wanna see how I built this trellis, I filmed the whole thing. It will be out this Saturday on our Next Level Homestead channel. So I'll put a link down below and right up here in case you wanna check that out. But today we're gonna to focus on the planting. I've got two varieties of blackberries that I'm gonna be planting and one variety of raspberries. I got three of these uh, blackberries bare root. This is called Ponca. It's a thornless blackberry. Now I also have a thorny variety called uh, Olali. It's an Olala berry blackberry. I actually grew up with this variety. My grandparents had it, my parents had it, and then I had it at our last house. And I took cuttings of it when we moved here. Unfortunately, because of the heat and everything that played into that move, not one of those cuttings worked. So I actually last uh, spring found Olala berries at our local garden center. However, they did not love where they were planted. Uh, and the weeds are choking them out now. So I've got, I thought I had three, but I only see two here. So I'm gonna dig those up and take them up to their new location where they should be much happier. The raspberries I did bring from our last house and they've been sitting in this pot for, what, a year and a half now? Actually more, because they they've been in this pot for two or three years. They had very little water since we moved here, but they did make a nice green carpet in here last year and then that was it. Um, as soon as the heat came and I stopped watering them as much as they needed. However, what looks like a bunch of dead sticks, if you look closely, you can see bits of green ready to make something happen. And then if you pull up these sticks, you can see little shoots right there. So I've got quite a few in here that I'll be able to plant up there as well. So let's talk about blackberries and raspberries and their requirements. There are thornless and thorny uh, blackberries and raspberries. Olala berry happens to be a thorny one, like I mentioned. Ponca is a thornless. And Heritage, which is, I think, from what I can remember, the label got lost, is a thornless raspberry. But blackberries and raspberries, or brambles, they love moist, really rich soil. If you think about where they grow, they grow on the edge of woodlands, forests, places like that, that from all of the leaf litter have a really rich soil, a little bit on the uh, lower pH, a little bit acidic, not too much. If you have a neutral soil, you're probably okay, but keep some soil acidifier on hand. We'll talk about that in a minute. If you have clay soil, I have a little bit of clay here. It's probably about 40% clay. Uh, that holds on to moisture really well. Now, full clay, they're not gonna like so much because they need some really uh, light, fluffy soil as well. So what I did and what you can do is mix in a bunch of uh, some kind of organic matter. I happen to use mushroom compost. Sorry about the noise. They're trimming trees across the way if you can hear that. So I, I put that down. I worked it into the soil a little bit. And then another requirement for brambles is something to grow on. I already showed you this trellis that I made. Um, now, obviously they don't have that in the wild. They could grow through bushes, up trees, um, but a some kind of trellis is going to help you when it comes to harvesting, caring for them and pruning. So something as simple as this will work. There's all kinds of types of trellises out there that I've seen. This type has worked for me in the past. And so that's what I put here. It's also simple and relatively inexpensive. Now, as far as pruning blackberries, I'm not gonna get into that in this video because they're tiny, but I do have a video that I will link right up here and down below in the video description. So if you're at that point, maybe you've been growing blackberries or raspberries, but you don't know how to prune them, head on over there to find that out. So let's go ahead and get started planting these. And I'm gonna plant that where the, the back side path is a little narrower <laughs> for obvious reasons. Uh, we'll have to squeeze back here among thorns. So I've got three of those, and then I've got the two Olala berry plants that I found down, or that I had down by the fence. And then I also bought two more at the nursery this year that are bare root. We'll put those here and then we'll put the raspberries on that end over there. So this one here has an actual nice root ball on it. This is the one I dug up over on the other side. The other one 
I broke off the end. Fortunately, it had done what blackberries do, and it had grown to the ground on the other end and started making roots. So I ended up getting two like that, which gives me three plus the two that I bought. All right, so we're just gonna dig a small hole directly under the, the wire line. And if you look close, you can see I've got new sprouts coming up here. And they're not green yet, so they can go slightly under the ground. Just gonna pack in around there. I'm just gonna spread them equally out in this area between these two first posts. So with this one, there's a bit to prune, prune off the dead branches. And this one has roots. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this up to where it grows off of this one here, cut it off, and then we'll plant this one as its own plant. This is the first branch that I had on it last year when I bought it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off because it looks dead anyway. And it wouldn't produce this year because it's the third year. I'll show you what to do with this in a second. little root bound. So I was wrong. These are not bare root. These are potted. So they're little root bounds. So I'm going to just mess up the roots a little bit so they can start heading out on their own. I'm going to plant it roughly at the same level that it was growing in the pot. It's okay if you mound it up a little bit more than that on blackberries raspberries. All right, so now I got to find out how many raspberry plants we can get out of this pot. So I'm going to dig down under any green that I see. There's one, one with a little stub down at the bottom. I was going to do this last year and when I pulled up the greens they were like this and they barely had any roots on them so I thought I'd leave them in the pot and here we are a year later and we do have a lot more plants here with roots and the ones that don't have roots I'm going to plant anyway and they will probably go ahead and root themselves all right so here go the raspberries I'm gonna plant these in more of a grouping than in a line, kind of filling in the whole space here, just because I have so many. If the shoots aren't green yet and they're still kind of white, like these here, it's okay to plant those below the soil level. Now, while we're watering these in, let's talk about fertilizer. Brambles actually fruit on new wood. And so this year's growth is what is going to produce the flowers and the fruit. So at this time of year, we wanna put nitrogen into the ground for growth because we want that vigorous growth that's going to produce the stems to make the flowers. There's a good amount of nitrogen in the organic matter that I already put down. I'm going to add to that something, uh, you know, an organic balanced liquid fertilizer. Um, like I use Neptune's Harvest, the tomato and veg, or the rose and flowering. Either one will do the work, do the trick. You could also do bone meal and blood meal. You work that into the soil a little bit. Now they don't need excess fertilizer. So I didn't put any in at planting time because that is more of a slow release. Um, you don't want too much vigorous growth or the patch will literally get away from you. 
So I'm gonna be watering these in and then I'll mix up some uh, liquid fertilizer, give them a good watering with that as a secondary watering slash feeding. And then maybe once a month, maybe once every six weeks throughout the growing season, I'll do some more liquid fertilizer on them. That's pretty much all it needs. Now, if your soil is very alkaline, you might want to put in some soil acidifier at planting time. Mine is neutral, pretty neutral, and so I'm not gonna do that. However, if you find that the edges of your leaves start to get dark, that is showing that they need a little more acid at their roots, and so at that point time, put on, put on some uh, soil acidifier, and that'll fix that problem. It's nothing pressing, it's not gonna kill the plant, it just needs to be attended to you know, as soon as you can. The final thing I'm gonna do here, once I get these watered in completely, is add another layer of mulch on top of it, about two inches, that's gonna further hold in that moisture. These will be added to my drip irrigation once I get that up here in the cottage garden, so they will have a steady supply of water throughout the summer, keeping the ground nice and moist. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, share it with a gardening friend, and I'll see you next time.